in this video i'll talk about what is least absolute uh, deviation estimation and how do we uh, perform a least absolute deviation estimation uh, in sas the least absolute deviation estimation is uh, related to the ordinary least square regression uh, uh, estimation so uh, in an ordinary least square um, estimation what we essentially do is we take uh, the difference of the regression line uh, from each data point uh, and we uh, square the difference and take the sum and uh, minimize the sum right minimize the sum of the squares the uh, change that we uh, do in uh, least absolute deviation estimation is that we do not uh, take the uh, square uh, or we do not square the difference okay we simply take the absolute value or the modulus of uh, the difference and we just sum it uh, uh, and we, we minimize that function. So, a least absolute deviation function is just a the uh, uh, summation of the modulus of y minus beta multiplied to x. So, the summation is missing here. Uh, there has there will be a summation here okay the summation of uh, modulus of y minus beta multiplied to x right so y minus beta multiplied to x is the difference between your data point and the regression line so we just take uh, you know the modulus of that uh, or the absolute value of that so you know it's going to be positive all the time and then we take the summation across and uh, do the optimization to find out what uh, beta really minimizes the uh, least um, the absolute deviation right so that's how we find out the least absolute deviation uh, and uh, you know we get a different type of regression line than that of a ordinary least square regression line right now this type of estimation gives uh, unstable results uh, which is of course a, a demerit of this uh, regression but the result is uh, more robust compared to the ordinary least square regression. So, uh, many a times when there is outliers in a data set, least absolute deviation works better than the uh, ordinary least square regression. Um, why does it, uh, you know, um, why does it work better when there is, uh, you know, presence of outliers? Because remember, in OLS, there is a square term, right? We square the uh, errors, right? When we square the errors and if there is an outlier, so there will be a big error, right? So, when you multiply the big error value or the big uh, difference between the regression line with the data point, um, you multiply it uh, with the same value. So, there is a higher weight given to that value, right? Um, and in case a data point is closer to the regression line, if there is a small difference. When you take the square, uh, well, you just multiply to small numbers, right? So, in that case, what happens is that there is a huge weight given to the, uh, you know, the values who are out outliers, considered to be outliers and, um, uh, you know, very less weight when the deviation is much less, right. So, that is why uh, the least uh, square estimation is not very efficient in the case uh, there is presence of uh, outliers. So, least absolute deviation does not uh, square it, right. So, the weight that you give to um, the data points is same across uh, all data points. Okay, so there is no extra weight given to the um, points which are considered to be outliers. So that's why it's more robust. So let's uh, go to SAS window and we'll perform uh, the uh, least square, least absolute uh, deviation estimation. So I've got a data set. Um, it's a sample data. Uh, let's perform the least absolute deviation estimation. Um, we are going to use the PROC OPT model in SAS. Um, so, the first step is to read the data and to get x and y. y is the dependent variable, x is the independent variable. Uh, the number of observations is stored in n. Then we define what is uh, our parameter. It is going to be beta, which is going to have two values, beta naught and beta 1. And then we uh, define um, the in the IMP word keyword, we define a new variable x beta, uh, which is nothing but uh, beta naught plus beta 1 multiplied to x. 
right so that's nothing but the regression line all right um, and then we define two more variables uh, one is surplus uh, and the next one is slack um, these two variables are nothing but the differences of data points lying in the um, upper side of the regression line and in the lower side of the regression line we're just giving two fancy names surplus and slacks and both has to be zero sorry both has to be greater than zero so we uh, you know we, we are saying that you know uh, we are taking the modulus of that you you, you know that uh, the data points lying below the regression line the difference is always negative right uh, but we are taking the modulus of that that's why we are putting this uh, you know constraint while defining these variables that these two variable has to be positive at any case then we define an objective function which is nothing but the sum of the slack and the surplus as i have said slack and surplus are nothing but the difference of data points uh, from the uh, regression line that i showed you in the slide right now we define a constraint here well, the constraint is that we define a constraint that the difference between the slack and surplus has to be uh, the actual difference between your data points and the regression line. So, why this extra constraint? Well, we have taken the um, modulus of that. When we take the modulus of that, we do not know uh, because both are positive, right? So, we do not know which points really lie on the upper side of the li line and which points do uh, you know lie in the lower side of the line because we are we are taking the um, in the positive values right so uh, for the optimization to be uh, to happen uh, there has to be uh, a constraint which which uh, should be fulfilled uh, you know in uh, you know the constraint has to be fulfilled for the data so the difference uh, that means uh, the difference between uh, the uh, sum of uh, de uh, deviations in the upper side of the regression line and uh, what is there in the lower side should be the actual difference between uh, the uh, slack and surplus that we have uh, defined right this has to be true otherwise uh, you know the something is wrong with our assumptions right um, so the algorithm will not be able to uh, provide optimization with just the min, uh, minimum function because we have not uh, defined slack and surplus anywhere we just defined uh, you know they have they have to be greater than zero so how, where they exactly get the values from well slack and surplus will get the values from yi and x beta we have already defined x beta which consists of our beta parameters and the xi value so the input to the uh, this estimation uh, comes from this constraint right and uh, you know finally we uh, call the solver and print beta and also keep uh, these variables in a data set so that we can analyze further right okay so let us uh, run this okay so when we run this uh, let me go to the result first okay uh, let me go to the output i think something is wrong okay let me run it again Sorry, I forgot to run the data set first. So let's uh, run the data first. Okay, fine. Now we should go to the code. So I'm really sorry, I did not run the data step first. Okay, now we can uh, run it. 
and if you go to the result window uh, you will get the you know the beta values so beta uh, beta naught is 0 0.5 and beta 1 is uh, 0 0.63 uh, and you know uh, down below you will see the different steps used at, you know there are 19 steps uh, for the convergence to happen so it took 19 steps for the algorithm so that's how you uh, you know uh, perform a least absolute deviation estimation this is an alternative to the ordinary least square estimation and remember that if your data set has too many outliers and you are lazy enough to you know remove these outliers from your data um, instead of uh, least square uh, regression if it doesn't work perfectly then you know you can always uh, try out the least absolute deviation um, regression as well. So let's see how the graph look like. I've already ran the graphical part. You can use proc z plot to uh, you know see uh, how the uh, how the fit uh, the regression line fits the data. So it's not a line. Uh, it it's just I'm taking the regression points. So the one which is uh, red is the regression line, and it fits the data. Um, so you know this is how you uh, you know fit a, a least absolute deviation a regression line to the data so if you want to see which one fits your data better you can always plot both least square the ordinary least square regression line and the least square absolute deviation regression line uh, on the same plot and see which one really fits your uh, data better so we can visualize in, uh, and you know get to a point which one is better